Welcome and good morning. Thanks for being part of Mike Ferry TV. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the good news is because of you, this program is growing and growing and it's been long. It's taken a, quite a bit of time and hopefully the results for each of you will improve as the time goes on. One of the questions that I do get asked a lot is how long does it take to really become good at selling real estate? And I always answer by saying, well, that depends on what your definition of becoming good at real estate is. You know, if, if you came into real estate from a sales background, direct sales background, and you had experience, and you understand the process, and you've had training in the skill set, and understand scripts and dialogues, it takes less time, obviously, than if you came into real estate with no experience at all from business or from sales. And I think the biggest challenge that we have all the time in real estate is understanding the value of the time it's going to take, because changing you and changing your behavior and changing your thought process is a difficult and long-term commitment. You know, the problem in real estate, and I, I say this to you respectfully, is that with the turnover being so high and the number of agents coming in, and the fact that most people will not commit to learning what it takes to list and sell real estate in high volume or medium volume, means that we aren't gonna change our behavior quick enough. What kind of changes in behavior do we have to make? Well, there's a lot of them. We talk about them each week as we share ideas with you. So I want you to understand that this question of how long does it take, it takes forever to become really good at anything. Look at a doctor, a lawyer, a pilot, look at a professional athlete, look at anybody that has made the commitment long-term to reaching a certain level or standard. You know, how many transactions five years from now do you wanna do per year? Do you wanna do 20 transactions a year? Do you wanna do 40? Do you wanna do 60? Do you wanna do 100? Each of us has to determine the goal, the objective, what that is we want to accomplish in the next one, three, five years. Then we have to lay out a plan to get there. And we have the plan. But the trouble is, and I want to say this to you as quickly and as openly as I can, the plan that we have requires hard work. And in real estate, that's a very uncommon thing. So let's take the fundamentals of that. Let's take something as simple as managing your time. People say to me all the time, well, how do you learn to manage your time? I said, well, what is the goal that you have? What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to take a listing a month? Do you want to take five listings a month? Well, if you know how many listings you want to take, then you know how much time has to be committed to learning the listing presentation, understanding the listing process, and of course, going out and prospecting to find the leads to get the listing appointments that you want. So your answer to me as to what you want to accomplish tells you and tells me what you have to learn in terms of time management. Many, many years ago, I made a statement to a group of agents. I said, you know, it's interesting. Most agents get up in the morning and they're excited, sometimes depressed, sorry if that's the case, excited about the opportunity of that day. So they come to the office and they're ready to go. And then life gets in the way. They're looking at their computer, they're checking their Facebook account, they're reading some emails, they're talking to agents in the office, they're having a cup of coffee, they get distracted and all of a sudden it's noon. And this happens too quickly. So I have always said, if you wanna be a productive agent, you have to master the morning. You know, what happens from the time you get up until 12 o'clock noon? What is your business like? Because what happens from the time you start to noon determines the results of the day. So I'll give you an example. We have thousands of agents who have the same objective every day, and that is to generate a highly qualified listing appointment to generate a highly qualified listing lead every day. And they're gonna work from 7.30, 8 o'clock until noon doing whatever it takes to make that happen. They're gonna, they're gonna spend the time talking to their past clients, their centers of influence, the for sale banners, the expired listings, just listed, just sold, knocking on doors, following up on people they've met. They're gonna do what it takes because their goal is to generate a good solid lead every day or to generate a valid appointment every day. Now you're gonna say, well, they can't generate a good appointment every day. Well, let's say that the goal is to do that and they only accomplish that three days a week, which is 12 appointments a month. And they have a 75% close ratio, so they take eight listings. That's not bad considering their commitment is to the morning schedule. Because see, what happens for the day depends upon what you do to start. So if your goal is to accomplish X, the morning schedule has to be strict, 
It has to be built on a strong foundation, and you have to work at heart every day with the discipline that you can have. Now, if your goal is to do one deal a month, do you really have to work that hard at it? No. But then you have to find ways to fill in the day so you can justify in your mind that you are actually working. I, I've had people say to me, create the perfect day for me. What does is, what is a perfect day look like for a real estate person? I said, it depends upon the goal again. If the goal is to make 50, 100, 200, 500,000 bucks a year, that schedule will be different than an agent that wants to make 30 or 40,000 dollars a year. Nothing wrong with either one of those goals, but your schedule reflects what the goal is. So I created a perfect day for a real estate salesperson. Now watch this. Watch, in the office at 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m., Mike, what are you, crazy? No, I'm not crazy, I've been checked. 7.30 a.m., why? You wanna be in before the rest of the people arrive. Most people don't show up until 10. Good, now you have plenty of time to really do your job at the highest level undisturbed, okay? 7.30 to 8, you check your messages, you check your emails, you go ahead and you check with Red X to see what buy owners and expired you're gonna be calling on. 8 to 8.30, you're gonna follow up on any leads you have and call for appointments. Mike, you can't call people between 8 and 8.30. Oh, now, wait a minute. See, the real world is up early because they have a job. They have to go to work. So we're gonna call them either on their cell phone in most cases as they travel to work to set the appointment, or we'll call them at their work once they get there to set the appointment. And if they don't work and you call them at home, they're still up. Only the real estate world is asleep, you know, at 8.30 in the morning. So 8 to 8.30, I'm gonna call for appointments and get any administrative work done that has to be done. 8.30 to 9, I'm gonna role play in practice. I'm gonna spend that 30 minutes practicing my scripts. When do you plan on moving? How long you lived at this address? Where'd you folks move from? You're gonna keep role playing, you're pre-qualifying, you're prospecting, handling objections, you're listing presentation, because when you start the day, you wanna have confidence, you wanna have a lot of power, you wanna have a lot of enthusiasm about what you're going to do, so you wanna be you know, fully mentally prepared. Nine o'clock until 12, prospect. Mike, did you say nine to 12 prospect? Yes, nine to 12 prospect. You're, you're gonna ask me to prospect three hours a day? Correct. But if I prospect three hours a day, I'm gonna get so many leads, I'm gonna surpass my goal. That's okay. Surpass your goal, big deal. But now you may say, well, I only have to prospect an hour a day. Fine, but you do it right after you do your role play. Why? Because now you're mentally prepared now, if you wanna do 20, 30, 50, 100 transactions a year, nine until noon, you prospect. Now remember, people said, Mike, what would you define as the perfect day? It may not be your day, but it's the perfect day. 12 to one, go to lunch, relax, enjoy yourself, just kinda of take off. But then it starts again, one o'clock until 1.30. Return your phone calls, because you're gonna have phone calls backing up, which happens. Do any other administrative work that has to be taken care of. 1.30 to 2, do your lead follow-up and pre-qualify any appointments you have for later that day or for the next day. Every appointment has to be pre-qualified. Watch, 2 to 2.30, any other administrative work that has to be done, checking your emails, et cetera, et cetera. 2.30 to 3, I always recommend you take a little break, refresh yourself because you're now going into showtime. This is where we really go to work. And then from three o'clock until 6.30 to seven, prepare for appointments, go on appointments, or do additional prospecting if you haven't generated the type of leads you want. Now, people say, Mike, tell me what is a perfect day. That's a perfect day. That's a perfect day. You're doing all the things that have to be done. You're doing your role play in practice. You're doing your administrative work. You're doing your follow up on your leads. You're doing your pre-qualifying. You're going on appointments. You're doing the prospecting required to make all this happen. So the question is, what is your day like? I've shared this with some of you in the past 10, 12 years ago. I had this great idea. My idea was that I would sell 1,000 tickets to a raffle for $1,000 each. And then we would sell the agents the raffle tickets, then I would draw one raffle ticket out, and that person we would take 
virtually 80,000 of the 100,000, and we would donate it to a charity of the winner's choice in their community. Lots of publicity, you know, lots of good PR, lots of good marketing. You know, Mary Lou is donating $80,000 to a local high school, to a local college, to a local hospital. 20,000 I would keep, and I'll tell you why. Because the winning ticket in the raffle, I would show up at eight o'clock on Monday morning with my notepad in my hand, and I would just shadow that winner from eight o'clock until six o'clock, or when their day ended, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and at the end of each day, I would critique the day for them. And that's what I would do. So one agent would have five days of intense scrutiny with Mike Ferry critiquing what their activities were, what they were saying, what they were doing, how they were doing it. I thought it was a great idea. Somebody gets to donate $80,000 to a charity. I get to spend a day working with a great agent, maybe like yourself. Here's what's interesting. I couldn't sell any tickets. Nobody would buy one. I, nobody would buy one. And I kept saying, well, why wouldn't you buy a ticket? And here was the answer, because I was afraid I might win. I don't want you to watch me for a week. If you saw what I did all week, you'd probably be upset and mad at me. I said, no, that's how we learn. But I don't follow the perfect day schedule. In fact, I don't even have a good schedule. And yet this person is doing 30, 50, 75 transactions a year. Can you imagine if we take you and we commit to the next one, three, five years time-wise of changing your behavior, and you follow a good schedule based on your growth and the goals you've set, can you imagine how good it's gonna be for you? Because see, I only have one goal, to make your business, your production, and your income better than it's been in the past. I would like to think we have the same goal. If we do, then today's session has been a good session. See you next week.